Hey y'all, welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. On Monday, I made some open face roast beef sandwiches. So for the roast, all I did was put a little under three pounds of a chuck roast into my crock pot. And then I used a packet of the McCormick pot roast seasoning and I just followed the directions on the back. So I just mixed that into a cup of water and then I poured that all over the top and then I just placed my lid on and I cooked that on high for four hours. And then when it was fully cooked, I just shredded it up and I was gonna make some brown gravy also, but as you see, it did not need it. It made plenty of of gravy. So I just took a piece of bread, topped it with some mashed potatoes, and then topped it with plenty of that meat and gravy. And then we had some green beans on the side. On Tuesday, we had a lot of leftover roast beef, so I decided to turn them into some sliders. I have these slider buns in my freezer, so I just let those thaw out, and then I heated up my roast beef. And I'm also going to be laying down some Kobe Jack cheese. Next, I melted some butter and brushed that all over the tops of the buns. And then I'm going to be sprinkling on some of that everything bagel seasoning. I'm going to cover this with full and bake at 350 for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to take my full off and let it finish for five more minutes. These turned out so, so delicious. I didn't follow a recipe. I just kind of made it up. I was worried about the bottoms getting soggy, but luckily they didn't. And I served it with some tater tots that I cooked in my air fryer and then a little side of mandarin oranges that I needed to use up. Next up, I made some buffalo chicken tenders in my air fryer. So to do that, I just took some chicken breast and sliced it into strips. And then I have a bowl of panko breadcrumbs that I'm seasoning with some pepper and some garlic salt. In the other bowl, I have a beaten egg. And then in the last bowl, I have some flour. So I'm just taking my chicken and I'm ducking it into the flour first, then into the egg, and then into the panko, and I'm just going to repeat that, and I'm placing them all into my air fryer basket. Then I just sprayed the tops with some olive oil and I cooked those at 400 degrees for 15 minutes, flipping halfway through. I put all of those into a big mixing bowl and I'm going to be pouring some mild buffalo wing sauce all over the top. And then I'm just going to give that bowl a good toss to make sure that everything got coated good. I served those up with some ranch on the side for dipping. I'm using the Belt House Farms Ranch. And I also made some baked potatoes in my oven, so they are topped with some butter, sour cream, cheese, and dried chives. And then, of course, I have my A1 sauce back there that I will be pouring on top of my potato. And that was dinner for Wednesday. Thursday was Valentine's Day, so I made pizza for the kiddos, and then Josh and I had steak. And I made these potatoes for the first time. They're called funeral potatoes, but some people call them party potatoes. I also had a side salad, and it is topped with some eggs, bacon, tomato, cheese, and I made some homemade ranch. I just used one of those ranch packets that you mix with mayo and milk. But now I'm going to show you how I made these potatoes and also how I make the perfect steak indoors. Starting off with the potatoes, these are the ones that I use. They are the southern style hash browns. For the other ingredients, we have some butter, cream of chicken, and some sour cream. Normally, I would use some sharp cheddar cheese in a recipe like this, but I just used what I had and used Colby Jack. Also have some onion powder and some crushed cornflakes. So first off, I just melted some butter into a large mixing bowl, and I'm adding in my sour cream and that whole can of cream of chicken. I gave that a quick season of the onion powder, and I gave that a quick mix. Next, I'm going to be folding in some cheese. And as always, this recipe will be linked in my description box so that you can get the exact measurements if you're interested. Lastly, I just tossed in those frozen hash browns and stirred everything to combine. Last minute, I did decide to add in some salt and pepper, even though the recipe didn't call for it. Um, next, I just have a sprayed bacon dish that I'm going to pour all of that cheesy potato goodness into. I'm going to spread that out, and then I'm going to top it with the crushed corn flakes. I'm going to melt a couple more tablespoons of butter to pour over the top of the corn flakes so that it can get golden brown. And 
then I'm just gonna bake that in my oven at 350 for one hour. These were delicious. I've been wanting to make this recipe for a really long time, so I picked a special occasion to do it on. The only thing I would do different next time is to add some garlic powder. So now for the steaks, I started off with some New York strips and I'm gonna be seasoning both sides with this McCormick Montreal steak seasoning. So anytime that I go to make steak, I always let it sit out for one hour before I go to cook it so that it can come up to room temperature. So that whole hour that my potatoes were in the oven, my steaks were sitting out on the counter and as soon as I pull those potatoes out is when I got started cooking those steaks. I love to use my cast iron skillet for this. I start off by adding in a couple tablespoons of olive oil and I let that heat up on medium high heat and then I add in my steaks and I let that sear for two minutes and then I'm gonna flip them over and sear the other side for two minutes. And I always use a timer for this. Also make sure that your oven is preheated to 450 before you even start and then you're gonna place that skillet into the oven to let it finish cooking. So for us, I do six minutes. That leaves a slightly pink center, but this is gonna depend on how thick your steaks are and how you like your steak cooked. You just kinda have to play around with it to find out what your magic number is but I just removed these to a separate plate and topped it with some butter loosely covered it with full and I let them rest for 10 minutes and these were perfect on Friday, I made what I like to call Polo Bandito. This is just kind of my take on what I like to order at the Mexican restaurants. So all I did was take two chicken breasts and I just diced that up into little cubes. And then I tossed those into my skillet that was heated with some olive oil. And I seasoned that with some of my homemade adobo seasoning that I will have linked below. And I just cooked that until it was no longer pink. And then I took some of this Pancho's queso cheese sauce and I melted that into the microwave and just added it to my skillet. And I usually get the Gordo's brand but my walmart doesn't carry it anymore so this is our first time trying this one and i liked it just as much if not better but i failed to get the footage of my finished plate i don't know if i deleted it or if i just didn't take it but here's a picture i served it with some refried beans topped with some mozzarella cheese and some mexican rice made in my instant pot on saturday i made some sweet and sour meatballs super simple just three ingredients so i have grape jelly chili sauce and some frozen meatballs so normally i would make this in the crock pot but i was short on time so I just decided to do it over the stove top and also I had less than half of a bag left so I didn't even measure the rest of the ingredients I just eyeballed it so I just tossed in the grape jelly tossed in the chili sauce and stirred everything to combine I let that come up to a bowl and then I turn it down to a simmer for 20 to 25 minutes so as that cooled down that sauce really thickened up and clung to the meatballs really nicely these were really yummy they would be even better with homemade meatballs I definitely want to try that next time and then on the side I tried some of this Knorr's white cheddar broccoli rice for the first time and and it was all right. It kind of had a weird taste to me. Kind of tasted more milky than cheesy, if that makes sense. So I probably wouldn't buy it again, but it worked for this meal. I also served it with some peas and carrots. On Sunday, we went out to eat at IHOP. I have been craving some breakfast, and Sunday is our one day of the week that we normally go out to eat. But that's going to wrap up this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and got plenty of inspiration for your meal planning. If you are new here, I hope that you'll stick around. I put these videos out every Monday. I hope that all of you have an awesome week. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.